we had a carbine, I couldn't hit it. It was an awful thing. And I had a 45 service automatic. I couldn't hit anything with that. I traded both of them. I traded my service automatic, my handgun, for I found, somewhere I found, I don't know where I traded, it was legal, I didn't give it, with an old fashioned Colt six shooter, 30 caliber, six shooter, I could shoot that. And I traded my carbine for an M1. A little heavy, but I could shoot it. That carbine was worthless. Oh, I got a story I got to tell. When we would, every time we'd move and go to, into another area, we'd have to go ahead and reconnoiter for proper gun positions because they weren't, you know, you just couldn't go set up anywhere. In the jungle, you had to be sure of the trees and terrain, and you know, it had to be. So we'd go on a, rec a rec we would record her, and we'd record reconnoiter as a battalion. And our commanding officer, Colonel Becker, well, he was Major Becker, Colonel Becker, great guy. <laughs> we would try to minimize the number of vehicles involved in moving around. You didn't want a whole you know, covey of people. So he said, well, we got to leave. We were going even tomorrow morning, so we're going to march order, we're going to go somewhere else. So we got to reconnoiter, we got to go. So we want, we'll go We'll go uh, in this order of, of march. I was C battery commander. I was B battery commander. I'd worked, I'd been in C We we'll go in this order of march. B, A, and C. Now, wait a minute, I got to back up and tell the story. One day prior to that, my first supply sergeant came to me and said, If you let me have the Jeep and go to Manila, we were just outside Manila, for an overnight pass, I'll have a surprise for you. Well, I knew he was a pretty good moonlight requisitioner, so I said, sure, why not? We worked it. So he came back the next morning with a, my, my seat in a, my Jeep, had a nice, soft, high back seat, <laughs> civilian seat in it, mounted. <laughs> but every, from that on, though, when we go on to recognize it, the order of march will be B battery, A battery, and C battery. I'll ride with B battery. I said, there goes my damn, excuse me, there goes my seat. So I wound up riding in the back and he was in my seat. But that's just, that's another, a little bit of story. Another story about moonlight requisitioning. In the Admiralty Islands, we didn't have, uh, the artillery and the cavalry didn't have a lot of good stuff, no fancy stuff. We didn't have these, what they call reefers, these things that made ice cream. We didn't have any of that. But the CBs had come in and were fixing the airport over on the main island, the Admiralty Islands. CB, you know, see, they were making, rebuilding the airstrip, expanding. They had a movie projector and, uh, and they had a generator to run the movies. Well, every night they'd run the movies and they'd have the generator make a lot of noise, big old generator down by the, by the beach, way out of the way, because it made a lot of noise. And way back up the hill, they'd be running the movie just about every night. So, <laughs> the same. The same supply sergeant said, let me have a, 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 a motor a vehicle, a boat, a little boat, I'll think of it in a minute, uh, and a couple of men, and I'll get a surprise. <laughs> surprise sergeant. Okay, so he took the men and they went over to the island, the main island, which is quite a little hall across that big harbor, and uh, slipped ashore and Shut the, shut the generator off. Cut the wires. Loaded the generator on the on the on the boat, and took off. And the lights all went dead. And see, they never knew what happened to that. And we had a generator from that point on for the rest of the war. We had a generator for our lights and everything when we'd have time to set it up. Hey boy! And another, and that was uh, that was B battery. Then C battery found an old American generator somewhere in. All shot full of holes. I mean, it was just full of holes. He'd been involved in a big fight. Somebody, some of their guys, took that generator, patched all those holes, and got that thing to run. Our, our GIs were unbelievable what they could do. I got a million of them. <laughs> I was going to say, did you find yourself sort of, I wouldn't say running black market, but taking things and improving things when your supply situation was limited? Anything you could get. 
I'll another, it brings up another story. On Leyte, when we were getting ready to leave Leyte to go to Luzon, we had spotted a supply dump down a dump, a supply area, where they had a bunch of these reefers, big things on wheels that you crank them up if you had a generator, and get it and make ice cream and ice, you know that kind of thing. Pretty good size. The Navy had them. The Army didn't have any, to my knowledge. So there again, that same sergeant came to me and said, "Sir, I think maybe we were getting ready to load." to go from Leyte to, to Luzon. And when we get on an LST, a big boat, we had the whole battalion on there. They they give you templates and you have they're all different. So you'd pre plan where you your guns, your vehicles, your tractors, your your cook cooking wagon was everything was going because it had limited space and it had to be done. So you'd have then you'd load what's coming off first Load it last, the front. It was very, quite a science. And get one of those big old landing ships. They had the ramps to drop down, you know, big two story LST, landing ship tank. The little boat I was trying to sink a while ago, the LSV, landing ship vehicle. That's where we got to the uh, generator. So he said, There's a, they, they're going to, we're leaving in the morning, and we've got, uh, I know where one of those, I think we can go down there. And, take a weapon scare down there and maybe swipe one of those reefers. I said, let's go. So we went down there and we were sitting off the side looking. It was getting dark. It was already dark. And we heard this ruckus going on down at the next gate. Turned out that was a battalion commander of one of the battalions, artillery, of one of the battalions that was going on that same LST with us. He was there with a group of men trying to steal that reefer and he had gotten caught. And boy, we took off. We left without our reefer. I just, that yes, to answer your question, we'd get anything we could, as long as it was GI stuff. We, we wouldn't take any civilian stuff, you know. Although I, we probably would have. I don't remember ever seeing anything civilian over in the Philippines that we would like to have. I, you know, I, 